cover that quickly, you can really eat termites. Yes, Mike, termites have been eaten particularly in Africa. Um, in Australia, they're not very frequently eaten, although there's one species in the tropics called Master Termes, which um, is a very large termite, and people have actually made quiches with these things sprinkled on the top and baked. Hello to those having a quiche for lunch. <laughs> are, are all termites destructive to man and to uh, buildings? No. With, in Australia, we have about 300 different species of termite. A great many of these are grass eaters or grass feeders. Some of them eat wood, some of them eat damp. Um, timber is timber in, in the bush. Yeah. And only about a dozen species are economically significant. What about the white ant? Is he a termite? Yes, what people call white ants are in fact termites. They're not white and they're not ants, but apart from that, the name's all right. Yeah. And, uh, well, I've, I've seen them. Uh, I had a house at Chatswood, and uh, uh, the, the building man once told me that the white ants let go of holding hands, the whole place would fall down. <laughs> Hello to the people who now own it. They've just had a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still there ten years later. But um, so they're still holding hands. But they, they were sort of a whitey-looking thing. Yes, they're pale. They're pale, yeah. They're pale fawn, Mike, and they belong to a different entomological order from the ants. But like ants, they are social insects. But they have that sort of caste system like ants, don't they? Oh, yes, they so, do. Yeah. Mm. The, um, Very snobby. I suppose you might say that. It's a well-organised society, and that's another way of putting it, in that the, the termites have a system whereby they have workers to do the work, they have soldiers to defend, and they have so-called nymphs which can become the privileged flying ones which can be kings and queens and set up future colonies. Well, let's have a look at a queen and her colony at this stage. What's she doing there? Well, that's not the queen, Mike. There you see some workers and a few soldiers. The soldiers have um, heads. There is the queen. And her enormously extended abdomen, or fat tummy, is such that she can lay up to 2,000 eggs a day. The, the king, who's much smaller in size, but still fairly important, is um, beside her there. And you can see a number of juveniles and um, and workers running about the place. There's the king. <laughs> I love the little baby ones. <laughs> and she can have 2,000 eggs? She can lay 2,000 eggs a day. That queen would be about 15 years old. That's an old queen, isn't it? 15. <laughs> so. What age do they live to? They can go on for a considerable period of time, usually um, 15 to 20 years is not unusual for a, a, a queen in a large colony. Mm. Well, they're, they're, they, who are the ones that have the sex then? The worker ants don't get any action at all, do they? they... No, it's rather sad for them, Mike. The, the workers and the soldiers are both sterile and blind. <laughs> so, uh... well, just a sec, you're all laughing, but how'd you like to be sterile and blind? <laughs> Eve would be out of business. <laughs> yes, not only can't they do it, they can't even watch anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so they're they're out of they're out of the scene completely. Yes, indeed. In fact, they're a um, a very well organised society, as I say, because it's virtually like compulsory unionism for some from birth, and um, compulsory national service for those who have to look after them. This is a piece of uh, uh, wood that has been attacked by what? The... That's been attacked by by termites. It's it's a piece of um, experimental material. But um, you can see there the amount of damage that they can, in fact, cause. Yes, this is the one that amazed me, though, I must tell you, Doug. I had no idea they could get at that. That's a piece of hardboard. You know, the uh, no brand names. A piece of hardboard. And look what they've done to it. That, again, was done by this tropical species ah. that um, is a particularly hungry sort of person and does cause quite a lot of damage in buildings, particularly in the tropics and nor northern Australia. Yes. Well, let's hope they don't get over the border, those ones. What are these pictures you have here? That's, um, we've got different ones here. One of those pictures, Mike, is to show the various castes. Um, Which we, one's that? This, this one here. Yeah. And we have the, the winged termite, yeah. which is the one, ones that will become future kings and queens. We have the worker and the soldier, which has the large head, which can be used for defence. Uh -huh. And what about these fellows? That simply shows the difference between various types of soldiers, between the different termite species. 
often identifications are actually done on, on the head shape of the soldier. Now, we've got, uh, what's this you've got down here? I haven't uh, had a look at this. Ah, well. What's that? That is a box. Yeah. And within the box we have this master termes. Yeah! And, <laughs> and it, they are in there, actually, as you can see, chewing wood, and they happen to be the largest termite in the world. But the normal size termites that we get um, down in Sydney or Melbourne, for example, are much smaller, but they can do a considerable amount of damage. However, it must be stressed that not all termites are destructive. No, but the, the ones that are destructive, what's the best way of treating them? Because you can, you can actually treat your house and then find that they're coming up through a root from a tree stump that's uh, 100 yards away, can't you? That, that can happen. Pre-treatment of buildings is, is the wise thing to do in areas where there is a termite hazard. Mm. And pre-treatment involves treating the soil with chemicals, and there's an Australian standard that says the way in which this should be done and which chemicals should be used. Thank you for joining us, and you can take your little friends home with you when you go. <laughs> We'd like to thank Doug uh, Howick for being with us today, ladies and gentlemen. Our smile contest.